Singapore is the world's busiest container transshipment port and is only behind Shanghai, the busiest port, as a whole, globally. Yet, Shanghai, which leveraged technological advancements and regional expansions, has been able to remain the world's busiest port for 13 consecutive years as at 2022. So how could Singapore surpass the high benchmarks that it has already set for itself, and usurp Shanghai standing as the world's busiest container port? Enter the $14 billion Tuas Megaport. Stay on to find out how this mega project is going to help Singapore achieve its goal. Singapore's transformation from a British trading post in the colonial period to the key international port it is today is nothing short of impressive. Its development into a global transshipment hub is down to the foresight, determination, and strategic planning of the Singapore leaders. In the early days, before Singapore gained independence, Smaller and lighter wooden boats were used to ferry goods from the decks of ships that had arrived to the warehouses located along the Singapore River. Laborers were also needed to load and unload the goods. The sea trade expanded over time and when shipping containers were introduced in 1956 to replace wooden crates and sacks that were typically used to hold goods. It completely altered the way cargo was being transported by sea. With containers, cargo could be moved much more quickly and easily, especially when transferring from ships to trains or trucks. With the involvement of shipping, Singapore knew that it needed to adapt and keep up with the pace of the growing volume of ships coming in. Singapore was at a crossroad. The government had to decide if it made sense to build a container port because of the high cost involved. And there were no shipping companies that had container ships plying the ship routes between Southeast Asia and Europe at that time. This was no easy decision especially when Singapore had only just gained independence in 1965 after being expelled from Malaysia due to political and economic disputes. Singapore's prospects were bleak especially when it had to tackle several challenges such as housing shortage and an unemployment crisis. The new city-state was vulnerable and had to prioritize its limited resources to ensure survival. So what should Singapore's next course of action be? Before we reveal the answer, do remember to subscribe and hit the notification button if you would like to see more videos on geopolitics, economics, and infrastructure. Despite the numerous issues that it had to overcome post-independence, its leaders had extraordinary foresight to recognize that this new mode of shipping using containers would be critical to Singapore's economic survival. So, in the late 1960s, Singapore took the bold step to build Southeast Asia's first container terminal at Tanjong Pagar. In 1972, it welcomed the first container ship, the MV Nihon, to its port, with the advantage of being strategically located at the intersection of major shipping routes. Singapore has grown into an important intermediate stop for container shipment. As a world-renowned port, Singapore offers a variety of services such as crew changes, fresh water supply, and towage that not many ports can rival. The port has also established well-connected links with over 600 ports spread across 120 countries. Each year, more than 130,000 vessels call at Singapore, with an estimate of 1,000 ships in the port at any one time. But then, the pandemic hit. Supply chains globally got congested on a scale that was never before seen. Yet, Singapore has emerged from the pandemic much stronger than its peers. In 2021, Singapore reached a record high of 37.5 million 20-foot equivalent units, or TEUs in short. With this, the nation once again retained its position as the world's busiest container transshipment port. However, the frequent lockdowns in China due to the pandemic and the Russia-Ukraine war have proven to the world how ports could easily become the bottleneck for the merchant trade worth $22 trillion. With outdated technology and capacity constraints, the inefficiencies of many ports around the world have been exposed as containers accumulate at docks. This has led to unprecedented disruption in global supply chains particularly in Asia where exporters found it difficult to ship goods to the US and Europe markets. To avoid the same supply chain issues, ports must address these inefficiencies. Although Singapore has been successful in building itself into a maritime powerhouse, it still faces stiff competition from Shanghai, which is the world's largest container port as a whole. And it is also susceptible to some of the inefficiencies described earlier. So what could Singapore do to address these pertinent issues? Singapore's solution is the Tuas Megaport, an audacious $14 billion project aimed at cementing its place as the global node in Asia. Estimated to be completed in 2040, this will be the largest automated port in the world with twice the existing capacity at 65 20-foot equivalent units.
Singapore had already planned for this expansion as far back as 2013, which is a testament to the government's vision. Given the limited land, Singapore has been reclaiming land in Tuas, located on the west coast, to build the port. Once the mega port is completed, all the existing terminals, which are located in different places, will be shut down and relocated to Tuas. The first three terminals that are located in the city, namely Tanjong Pagar, Keppel, and Brani, will be closed by 2027, while the last terminal at Pasir Panjang will be closed by 2040. This consolidation of the existing capacity at the new port will provide Singapore with a competitive advantage as Tuas will be able to handle a much higher volume of container ships, which in turn lowers the unit cost of cargo. Container management will be more efficient as there is no longer a need to travel through downtown when transporting cargo between different terminals. This in turn reduces the queues formed by trucks waiting at the terminals, which was one of the key factors that resulted in the severe holdup of goods movement at the Shanghai port during the COVID-19 lockdowns. Tuas is also in proximity to many industries located in the west of Singapore, which means that industrial products can be shipped to international markets much faster and at cheaper rates. But wait till you hear about the insane technologies being deployed at the port. To improve the port's tracking and coordination of shipment and logistics, Singapore will deploy automated guided vehicles to transport containers between the yards and berths where ships are docked. A human driving a truck will lead a convoy of driverless vehicles to enter or exit the port with the help of wireless communications and sensors. Other equipment such as yard cranes will also be automated and operate on electricity. Drones will be deployed to support shore-to-ship deliveries and help security guards with security checks. These technologies would help the port reduce its reliance on manpower, especially in today's global labor shortage. If that is not enough, Singapore will be leveraging artificial intelligence and machine learning built into a traffic management system to predict and prevent potential collisions. An integrated information system will also be implemented to track cargo and identify demand surges so that the information could be communicated to supply chain stakeholders. To achieve net zero emissions by 2050, the port will incorporate green and energy efficient technologies in its building designs and adopt battery energy storage systems and smart grid solutions. One of the reasons that contributed to Shanghai's port congestion during the lockdowns was that there were not many people available to deliver the physical documents required for the verification of cargoes. Singapore has done away with this outdated practice and instead relied on electronic bills of lading, which is an e-document that must be obtained from ship captains for cargoes to be offloaded from the ships. Singapore's unique proposition has given ships a compelling reason to include the port as part of their pit stops in their routes. First, the port aims to provide a streamlined and efficient experience for ships such as in refueling, unloading cargo, and storage. Second, unlike ports in China or the UK where congestion is more common due to the high volume of imports that need to be moved from the ships to other parts of the countries, and exports being transported to the ports, Singapore does not face similar issues as a transshipper. Lastly, the Singapore government and the unions have formed a strong working relationship built on trust and mutual respect which makes it rare for workers to strike, unlike in other countries. A most recent example is South Korea, where the country experienced a nationwide strike by unionized truckers which crippled the country's ports. Evidently, with the Tuas megaport, Singapore looks set to add the icing to the cake and put itself in a much stronger position to compete with Shanghai and other ports in China. The port will be opened in four phases. Phase one of the port is already completed with 21 berths ready for use. The port was officially unveiled on 1 September 2022, with three berths run by 500 workers. A total of five berths are expected to be in operation by end of 2022. Despite the smart technologies deployed and the use of a data-driven approach to managing operations, Singapore believes that human capital remains critical to delivering quality service. It is with this in mind that Singapore has sought to upskill and reskill the workforce so that workers can take on higher value job roles created by the digital transformation of the port. For example, a crane operator could be retrained to control a crane remotely from a control room instead of being physically up in the crane. Thousands more jobs are expected to be created for the maritime industry with the new mega port. Singapore's maritime industry has no doubt contributed to the economic success of Singapore. Once the Tuas mega port is completed, it is set to be an even bigger juggernaut ready to rival or even surpass China's ports. But did you know that Singapore is just as well designed and easily beat cities such as New York and Hong Kong?
To find out why Singapore is so insanely well designed, watch this video here. And if you are keen to watch more videos, do check out the links in the description below.